Hey guys, it's Natalie, and today we're going to talk about community ecology. So by the end of this presentation, you should be able to define what an ecological community is, describe three different types of species interactions within communities, and explain how communities change over time. Some key terms we should all be on the same page about as we go through this presentation are as follows. An organism is any living thing. So that goes for a bacteria, to an ant, to a sequoia, to a bear. If it's alive, it's an organism. A species is a group of organisms capable of exchanging genes or interbreeding. So if they can produce offspring, they're of the same species. And a population is a group of individuals belonging to the same species that live in the same region at the same time. So that anthill in your backyard is a population of the same species of ants. The geese flying overhead in the V formation is a population of the same species of bird living in the same area at the same time. A community is the sum of the interactions between various populations within a specific geographic range. The key term being geographic range. So populations of organisms living together in the same area are a community. So is this a community? It's not. You have a lot of organisms, but they're all the same organism. So this is a population, but not a community. Is this a community? It is. You have lots of different organisms living together in the same area. So you have different fish species and coral reefs and algae, and they're all in the same area, so they're a community. So within communities, we have relationships between different organisms, and there are three different types of interspecies relationships that we're going to cover today. One is symbiosis, the interaction between two different species living in close physical association. The other is competition, or the interaction between two different species that are vying for the same resources. And predation is when one species hunts another. So let's go into more detail. Symbiosis there are actually three different kinds of this kind of relationship. The first being commensalism. So that's when one organism in the relationship benefits and the other is largely unaffected. An example of this is orchids and tropical trees. Orchids are these flowers right here and they're a relatively small plant. But they do have trouble getting to um, sunlight which is a resource they need to grow. So they grow on top of these large tropical trees. The trees are unaffected, but the orchid benefits because it's able to get sunlight easier. Now, army ants and birds in the tropical rainforest also have this kind of relationship. So army ants are exactly what you think they are. They're um, large populations of very aggressive ants, and they go on raids on the rainforest floor. And when they do that, they kick up debris and dust and insects that are living on the floor, and they fly up out. Um, from underneath the arm, army ants as they raid. Now certain species of birds have learned to follow army ants as they raid and they're able to eat the insects that are flying up out of the rainforest floor. So the birds are benefiting and the ants are largely unaffected by this relationship. Mutualism is a type of symbiosis in which both organisms benefit. So a classic example of this is bees and flowers. Bees need the nectar from flowers to help make honey, and they get pollen on them, and they um, help the flower reproduce by transferring the pollen of one flower to another flower. The last type of symbiosis that we're going to talk about is parasitism. So that's when one organism benefits and the other one is negatively affected. So for example, tapeworm, which is a nasty bug that humans can get, um, can live inside of the human stomach and benefit by getting nutrients out of humans' digestive system. Humans are negatively affected because we get sick. Fleas are an example of parasitism because they feed off the blood of our furry friend right here, and the dog is negatively affected by being, at the very least, annoyed. So another type of relationship within communities is competition, and that's when both organisms suffer a net negative effect. In fact, when you have species competing for resources, 
um, with one another, you will often see one sp species either move to a different community or die out. So for example, lions and hyenas both prey on the same large um, game. So you won't see them living together for very long because there isn't enough prey to sustain both a lion population and a hyena population in the same community. Speaking of predation, the predator-prey relationship is the last one we're going to talk about. And a predator is a species that hunts and eats prey. Um, so we're going to look at a cat and mouse example. Um, so here on this graph we have population size on the y-axis. We have time over here on the x-axis. So let's say we have a community um, on a farm and we have about four cats living on that farm and uh, about 50 mice living on that farm. Now four cats isn't too many um, and so these mice are going to be able to continue to grow in population size despite there being some cats eating them some of the time. Now as the mice population grows over time um, the cats are well fed because they're able to kill and eat lots of mice and they're able to reproduce so cat population grows. As the cat population grows, they're eating more mice, which means our mice population is going down, and at a certain point it's going to get so low that our cats are not going to have anything to eat anymore. So they're either going to die out or move to a different community. Now when they die out and their population goes down, our mice are able to grow again, and so it goes over time just like it did before. Speaking of time, communities change over time, and that's called succession. So we're going to talk about some different types of succession and what happens. Primary succession occurs in a place that's devoid of life. So this picture right here is a lava flow, and there is nothing living on it. Now the first thing that's going to happen is a pioneer species, which is almost always a plant, is going to come in and start to survive and start to add nutrients to that area. Um, eventually, fungus will come, insects, small animals will come, and they'll be able to support their populations because there'll be enough nutrients there. Um, and this happens over a very long period of time. Now, bigger animals that require bigger, more resources and bigger plants that require more resources will be able to come in over time as nutrients build up in this area. This succession occurs until a climax community is reached, and that's the final stage of succession. So typically a climax community in a um, region will have plants and animals that are have a long lifespan and require a lot of resources, um, but they are not going to be pushed out of that community or succeeded by other organisms. Secondary succession occurs in a community that once had a stable life but has since been disturbed by a major event like a forest fire, a hurricane, flood, or human development. Um, in secondary succession, um, you'll still have some life remaining after that disturbance and populations will come in and recolonize that area. They might be the same populations that were there before and just got displaced or you might see a new population coming in and um, occupying a niche that maybe a different organism did before. Um, this kind of succession happens over a much shorter period of time. So let's see if you were listening. Which one of these is an example of a community? This one at the bottom has lots of different populations in the same area, so this is a community. Up here we have lots of organisms, but they're all the same species, so this is a population. Now these pictures all represent different kinds of relationships. So what kinds of relationships are we talking about here? This first one is a, an example of predation. You've got a bear, the predator, preying on the fish for food. Over here we have competition between two different plant species. So they're competing for a resource which is sunlight and this big 
tree is going to at some point outcompete this little tree because it's going to create so much shade that those plants below it aren't going to be able to get that resource of sunlight. Over here we have the very annoying mosquito, which is an example of a parasite, which is a kind of symbiotic relationship. So the mosquito is benefiting because it's getting a meal and the um, human is annoyed or being negatively affected, uh, particularly if the mosquito is carrying some sort of disease. Now what do these pictures represent? Here we have an area that's um, pretty much devoid of life, but we've got some water there. And where there's water, um, you will have primary succession of a plant species. And over a very long period of time, this area will eventually um, grow into a climax community, hopefully. Um, over here we have a disturbance, which is human development. and Despite that, we have secondary succession occurring. So we have um, organisms coming in and starting to grow and uh, create a new community. So thanks for listening, and I hope you learned something today.